is one of the most important films, period. I mean that not only because of its cultural significance, but because of its attention to detail and the way the film subtly tells one of the most fragile stories to ever be put in film. What I find so captivating about Moonlight is how purposeful everything is. Each shot has some significant meaning that adds to the story. Of all the themes that come across throughout the film, the message behind the title, Moonlight, is what gets across the most subtle and most powerful. To be under the moonlight in this film means to be yourself. This first becomes evident in Act 1, when Juan takes Little to the ocean to teach him how to swim. Let hey, your head rest in my hand. Relax. I got you. I promise. I'm not gonna let you go. Hey man, I got you. The scene has always struck as a powerful moment in Chiron's childhood, never truly understanding why besides the fact that it resembles a baptism. Looking back at it, this scene is Little and Juan at their barest and truest selves. The ocean takes up 70% of the earth and remains incredibly mysterious to humanity. To immerse themselves in this openness is to bring out their vulnerability. This is more than Juan teaching Little how to swim, it's Juan teaching Little how to be comfortable with fear. On top of this, I see the water as a reference to the original title for the play, In Moonlight, Black Boys of Blue, by Terrell Octavian. The title obviously had such a meaning that Barry Jenkins decided to have Juan say the exact phrase to Little in the same scene. In Moonlight, Black Boys look blue. The phrase, in moonlight, black boys look blue, opens up the idea that you are more than what your skin color might define you as, while at the same time keeping that pride in that color. It's saying that there are layers to being black, and those layers are revealed in the moonlight. This idea of being under the moonlight and the significance of the color blue is resurfaced later in Act 2, specifically the famous kiss scene and the revenge scene. At this point in the film, we are in Chiron's teenage years. It is at this time in his life where he is still confused, but not unaware of the fact that he can have feelings. We first see the color blue pop up in his first interaction with teenage Kevin, when Kevin, somebody who clearly has his identity figured out more than Chiron, comes out of the blue surrounding him. What you doing here? Detention, man. Ames called me with this trick in the stairway. Damn. Yeah. Ooh. Damn, you nosy, nigga. This whole time, Chiron moved from his colorless area into the blue setting by the end of the scene, telling us that Chiron is now comfortable being in that zone, the way that Kevin is. Things start to ramp up later when Chiron is on the beach with Kevin, who, as we were able to figure out earlier, is clearly Chiron's crush at this point. It is here where we find Chiron opening up to Kevin once again, while, believe it or not, at the beach, next to the water. This is the follow-up scene to the initial swimming situation, considering how much more open Chiron remains in this beach setting compared to the first, especially when he looks up at the moon with Kevin. To me, this shot is the moon looking down at two carefree boys who are stripped of all false identity that was previously placed upon them. Coincidentally, shortly after this shot, Kevin and Chiron share what is Chiron's first kiss, and the realization of who he is kicks into full effect. Chiron has not only confirmed with himself who he is, but he has found somebody that isn't Juan who we can trust. You ain't never done nothing like that before, huh? Fast forward and we find ourselves in one of the hardest scenes to watch in the entire film. Nah, but you remember the middle school, that game we used to play? Knock down, stay down. Kevin is sitting at the table with a blue shirt with white lines, and Chiron walks into the lunchroom with a white shirt with blue lines. This is a clear moment where the two of them complete each other, that is, until Terrell talks to Kevin. Terrell tells Kevin to beat up Chiron, and sadly, he agrees to do so. By doing so, Chiron loses all his trust in Kevin and feels as if he isn't safe anymore. Fast forward and Chiron is seeking revenge in the bathroom. The scene starts with Chiron washing himself off in the sink. The shot pans down on Chiron from above. To me, the camera acts as the viewer so that when it pans back up at Chiron, it feels as if we are watching him from below, despite the fact that the camera is leveled with his eyes. Next, at first glance it appears Chiron is looking at himself in the mirror, but that isn't the case. I noticed that at the beginning of the shot there isn't actually a mirror. I mean, there probably is, but it just isn't open. Now I look at this as an excuse by the DP to not get the camera in the shot when doing the pan, but this choice also has some layers to it. One could argue that Chiron flipped the mirror back, but that's never shown on his way up. So what is he doing when he looks at himself in this way? To me, this speaks as him looking straight ahead and not back at himself. It almost serves as a loss of personality and self-knowledge, and makes sense considering his focus is entirely on hurting Terrell without any exceptions or self-doubt. This similar situation pops up at the intro for Black in the third act. Black is washing his face and then proceeds to look up in a much more confident manner. Bringing this scenario in particular back around says something about what it meant, it being washing his face in the use of water. In this first moment, Chiron realizes the type of individual he should be. He feels a sense of power when washing his face, and that sense of control clearly sticks with him up until his adulthood. But why washing his face? 
Well, this is where that ocean scene comes back, and the significance of water is brought back into the story. That first scene, like I said earlier, is Juan and Little at their most vulnerable and true moments, surrounded in water. This is almost to say that the water washed away all worries and thoughts of the outside world, and left them with nothing to focus on but themselves. That vulnerability has continued to resurface in his life and when it's needed, and the revenge scene is this situation at its peak. Rather than questioning, he's acting out, or at least how he thinks he should be doing so. The remainder of the scene is basically a build-up up until Chiron attacks Tyrell. The first thing I notice in this intense build-up is how low the depth of field is while Chiron is walking to the classroom. Everything in his surroundings is blurred out, signifying that nothing matters at all besides him and getting to this classroom. Coincidentally, when the door opens to the classroom, everything becomes a lot clearer. Everything is in focus and it makes the scene all the more powerful for the viewer. <laughs> In this same scene, we see the color blue at its strongest. Chiron is dressed in a very vibrant blue, the blue walls in the school pop up more than before, and I mean even some students are wearing the color. This directly links back to the quote from earlier. Black boys look blue. When keeping in mind the fact that to be blue means to be yourself, the scene completely makes sense. We are at the first moment in Chiron's life where he is standing up for himself, something he has hesitated in the past. Chiron and the setting around him remain blue, and he's in a sense in the middle of the world. In the middle of the world. Lastly, there's something very strong to say about Kevin in this scene, specifically his wardrobe. In the scene before this, Kevin was wearing a blue shirt with white stripes. In this following scene, as Chiron is being dragged into the cop car, Kevin is in an all gray t-shirt. To me, this felt like Chiron took the blue out of him. Losing Chiron in his life is also a loss of himself. Kevin couldn't be himself in the moment, nor feel the sense of loss and love he had for Chiron, hence his lack of color. So here we are at Act 3. A red light that was previously blue blinks on the screen, signifying the loss of water and personality, and the increase in red. Here we see Black, the nickname Chiron calls himself despite the anger it brought him in the past. This also marks a loss in personality and goes against what Juan said earlier and how you shouldn't define yourself by what others define you as. We see this new, confident, slick character who is nothing like the vulnerable Chiron we saw earlier. That is, until Kevin calls. Believe it or not, Kevin is in a blue lit setting, as if this color has been brought back into his life and resurfaced as a feeling for Chiron. It's at this moment where the blue enters Black's life and he loses that confident manner of his and it all washes away from there. Things come to a close in the final scene of Act 3, where we have Black and Kevin's house. It's evident throughout the third act that Black and Kevin have lost that vulnerability. Kev is a cook with a family and Black is a hustler. Even when the two of them sit together in the restaurant, there is a lack of blue and a lack of personality in the two of them. It isn't until the two end up back at Kevin's house that their true colors start to come out. I say this because the things that Black wanted to tell Kevin come out when Kevin comes back in a blue shirt. We once again are introduced to that color, the sounds of the ocean, and that comfort that brought the two of them together in the first place. At last, both Black and Kevin are able to feel like themselves together. You're the only man that's ever touched me. You're the only one. I haven't really touched anyone since. The film ends with Little, looking out into the ocean under the moonlight alone. After panning in, Little looks back at the camera, almost as if he is staring down the viewer. To me, this is Little looking at us if we are him in this moment. We are with him the same way Black is with Kevin. This is Little asking us who are you, and inviting us into the vulnerable mindset that he has learned from Juan because whether you like to admit it or not, we all have something about us that we like to hide and it's impossible to ever know who we really are unless put into such a position. Some common criticism I've heard regarding the third act is that it lacks in comparison to the rest of the acts because of its lack of diversity. While this is true, act 3 contains far less diversity in locations compared to the first two acts, that seems completely intentional. I can't say much as a 19 year old, but I've gained a sense of slowness when being in incredibly significant and uncomfortable situations. This whole act is black confronting those in his life that he has been without and don't know who he is anymore. Of course they're going to be uncomfortable and painful to sit through. It's a painful moment in Black's life. If anything, the slow pace of this final act adds to the story, if nothing else. As I said before, Moonlight is one of the hardest films to understand at a conceptual level, despite its clear three-act structure. Growing up with these internal struggles with these types of individuals in your life aren't things that can just be brushed over like certain films attempt to do. 
Moonlight is complex, it's difficult, it's painful, but above all, it's beautiful, and one of the most honest films I've ever seen. As always, go see a movie, and thanks for watching.